My name is RJ Davidson. I'm a software development major graduating in fall of 2023, and I worked on the back end of MAP11. My name is James Gibb. I'm a data science major graduating in fall of 2023, and I worked on the data management for our project. Hi, I'm Ronnie Ko. I am graduating in 2023 as a computer science major, and I work on the front end of MAP11. I'm Ethan Quinlan, computer science student at the U, graduating with my master's in 2025. I worked on the front end for MAP11. Almost a year ago, Ronnie, James, Ethan, and I decided to build a companion app for the game of soccer. We were excited to announce that MAP11.com is now live, and anyone can go there to follow the sport. We currently support six leagues, over 100 teams, and over 2,500 players in our database. This allows users to get the best info about the current leagues, games, and players. Speaking from personal experience, I know that it is almost impossible to keep up with every team and player in the sport. When my favorite team, Chelsea, is playing a newly promoted Premier League side, I may not be familiar with every player on that team or even how that team plays. Using Map11, I can check out the lineup for that team and look at the statistics for all the players to understand how they play the game. We expect Map11 to be the companion app for soccer fans around the world. So here's our landing page. Here we have popular teams, the current fixtures, and also popular players. This gives a really good overview of what we have to offer on the website and allows people to see what leagues we support, what teams we support, and what matches we currently have. So the main part of this page is the fixtures. We have fixtures that are current today and fixtures that have occurred in the past as well as the future. So you can use this little arrow clicker to keep going back into the past. But one of the big components of our user feedback was being able to do this without it being too tedious if you wanted to go far back into the past. So we added this calendar component here. This will allow you to go to any date that you want that we support. And if you wanted to go to a match that you remembered, you can. So a pretty memorable match happened on November 13th. It was Columbus Crew versus Atlanta United. So we can go back to November 13th and then we can click on the page that happened. And then once you do click on the fixture that happened, it'll pop up the scoreboard. It will have the score that happened. It'll have the players that scored, what time it happened. And if you go below that, it will also have the fixtures of both teams. So if you see who they played and what formations they played against each other. And if you keep going below that, it will have the team cards. This will let you see how the teams are doing before they played. And also have the events in the middle of that. So the events are really the star of this page. They list everything that happened in here from goals to assists to fouls to substitutions. And then also next to the events, it has these rotating player cards so add a little connectivity to the website. And these are just a really nice feature to have so that way the events aren't too long. So here we can click on Erasi here on the like rotating player card, or you can click on, on the event that happened. And then if we click on him on the event that happened, it will open his player page. And you can see on this player page, we have a little player card for him that has his position, age, height, weight, and form, which is in the top right corner here. We also have his player stats. So the really nice thing about the player stats is you can select what you want to see on the radar chart. So right now we have goals, passes, and shots. But say if you want to also see his assist, you can click on assist and it will change the radar chart to show uh, whatever stats you want to see. Let's so say you want to care, compare him to Giacomakis. You can click on Giacomakis and it will automatically reshape the radar chart for you and show you how those players compare. You can also change assist back to none so you can add things but you can also subtract things from the radar chart that you want to see. There are also other hard stats that we have here that are visualized using pie charts and just simply listed as well. You can also go to his team by clicking on his team in his player card, and this will bring up Columbus Crew. This page is very similar to our player page. It has soft stats listed as well as the radar chart here, so you can see like wins, games, scored, clean sheets, and also fixtures and average goals and fell score for here. So if you wanted to add these, you would do the same thing where you have goals, you can select the team to compare, so say you want Celtic, or Celtic, then you have this radar chart here. And you can also hover over the radar chart to see what specific sets they are in case you know you want to see without having to look too much into the visualization. 
it also has goals by the minute. It has their form. It also has their next, ma next match. And it has also more pie charts that list the stats and just list the stats on the left side. So if you wanted to go and see how Columbus Crew is doing, we could go to this page here by clicking on the top right of Columbus Crew's card and it'll bring us to Major League Soccer. So we also have a standing page for the six leagues that we support, MLS being one of them. This will let you go in and see how each team is doing individually. And it will have the Eastern Conference and the Western Conference as well. Uh, for something like Champions League where there's groups, we also have groups laid out for that. And on this standings page, we have their statistics on how they're doing in the specific league itself and their form as well. So let's take a look at a user study. Say I'm a big fan of the Team Celtic. I know that they played a match yesterday, but I didn't see what happened. So let's see, it looks like they lost to Lazio. So let's see who scored for Lazio. We can see that it was a sub that scored, who got subbed on the 61st minute. And we can see that they scored in the 82nd minute. So let's click on their stats and compare that to a Celtic player and see how they stack up. I'll click on my favorite Celtic player. And we can kind of compare and see who's better here. So you can see that my Celtic player actually has more goals so far in the Champions League this season, but maybe you want to see more stats. So let's look at shots on target, dribble success, and key passes. Kind of to see an overall who's playing better. And we can see that, yeah, okay, maybe we see now that the Lazio player is doing better than our Celtic player. But maybe Lazio is also just doing better overall. So we can also look at Lazio's team and compare this to Celtic. We can select different stats like goals, average goals, and fixtures. And here we can see that Lazio is kind of clear ahead in the way of stats versus Celtic. So Celtic's not doing too great this season. We can also see Lazio's form has been great this season. If we look at Celtic, theirs has not been as great. We can also see where Celtic is lining up in the Champions League. We scroll down to group E, which are there, and we can see that Celtic's at the bottom of their group. Maybe we also want to see another favorite one of our favorite teams, like Bayern. Maybe we don't see them in the Champions League, so what we can do is we can use this tab feature and look at a list of popular teams. And maybe we don't see them here either. So what we can do is we can use the search feature, we can search Bayern Munich, click on their page, and we can see their stats, and we can see they're doing way better than Lazio or Celtic. Going over our system design and tech stat. To begin, we retrieve our data from apifootball.com. We do this using Go. We then um, employ an Ent framework, which is a Go library to store all of our data in a Postgres database. To interact with the front end and serialize the data, we're using Fiverr, another Go library that then interacts with Vite to build the front end. Um, and we're on the front end, we're using a React.js framework as well as TypeScript. Um, this is all containerized in Docker, and then we deployed it on an Ubuntu and Nginx server. And we deployed it on map11.com so that anybody can access it from their mobile devices or their desktops. 